Our sprint rears can be found on everything from 305 to 410 sprint cars, and they've been run by some of the winningest teams in racing history. Every day we're shipping quick changes to customers around the world, so we thought you might like to step inside our assembly area and see how these rears are made. After the magnesium center section and side bell have been machined and finished with our thermal dispersant coating, they come to our assembly area where the center is placed on a bore heater for about 30 minutes. This evenly heats the entire casting, which allows us to easily seat the drop-in pinion bearing and the stationary coupler that mates the lower shaft with the stub shaft. The two pins flanking the pinion bearing are there to help with alignment during installation. After letting the center cool for another 30 minutes, it's placed on a jig and the pinion bearing alignment pins are removed. Two snap rings are installed behind the stationary coupler in the lower gear cavity. Then it's time to install the shifter assembly. Once the gasket's in place, the shifter block is installed using 5 16 inch 12 point bolts that are torqued to 17 foot pounds. We machine these blocks from billet aluminum because while we don't recommend jacking the car up on the shifter block itself, we know it's tough to avoid when you're in the pits and the chips are down. The billet blocks are strong enough to take some abuse, but try to avoid putting the jack directly on it whenever you can. Next we set the stub shaft in place, aligning it with the shifter fork on the way in. Then a shielded lower bearing is hammered into place. Throughout this assembly, you'll see a number of tools like this one that we've made specifically for hammering various components into place. Once the shielded bearing's in, another snap ring locks it all down. Our racing rears use a stamped steel bearing retainer plate that's bolted in using two of the six pinion bolts. These bolts get flat washers and red Loctite before being tightened to 25 foot-pounds. With the pinion bolted in place, a pinion preload wrench is used to loosen the pinion nut. Then we hit the end of the pinion with a rubber mallet to make sure the nose bearing is seated. Next, the pinion nut is retightened, and we set the pinion preload to 15 inch pounds on the dial torque wrench. Finally, a posi cap is installed and tapped in to lock the posi nut in place before the inspection plugs are installed. The bore liner is installed using a set of alignment pins and a custom steel cap that's hammered in with a rubber mallet. Then the coupler seal is hammered into position before a steel spacer is pressed in place. After the lower shaft is installed, we coat the coupler with Vaseline where it rides on the coupler seal. Then we give it a few more hits with the hammer to ensure the coupler spacer and bore liner are squarely seated within the assembly. Our sprint car axles are manufactured from high strength aluminum and they're available off the shelf with popular sprint offsets, or they can be made to any custom length, bore, and offset specs you need. This aluminum axle already has its forged aluminum spool and 10 inch ring gear installed. A pair of bearings and shims are slid onto each end before the axle is slid into the center section and the bell is installed. All bearings and full size quick change rear ends are either NTN or Timken because they make the best quality bearings we've found. Once the side bell is on, we install a 7 16 bolt closest to the lower shaft coupler and snug it up. Then we install the nut parallel with that bolt at the back of the rear and we torque it to 35 foot-pounds. The rear end should spin freely at all times. If it's tight and can't be spun by hand, it's creating drag and costing you valuable horsepower, and we can't have that. Any rear that doesn't spin freely by hand is checked and corrected before we go any further. A 24 thousandths feeler gauge is inserted between the side bell and center section to check the crush on the axle bearings. If it's not 24 thou, we install shims, but this one is just right, so we go ahead and install all the washers and nuts, torquing all of them to 35 foot-pounds. Once the bell is on, we jiggle the pinion to get a rough idea of backlash, and we spin the axle again to get the bearings properly seated. Then a dial torque wrench is used to check the pinion preload, which should be between 25 and 30 inch-pounds. Finally, a dial gauge is put on the pinion to measure backlash, which should be between four and six thousandths. If you're setting up your own quick change, there are tools available to help determine backlash, but we simply set the gauge on the flank of the pinion spline for an accurate measurement. Remember that if you're checking backlash off of the axle, the measurement will double what you read at the pinion. So if backlash is four thousandths at the pinion, it will measure eight thousandths at the axle. There's a ring gear adjuster on the side of the rear that limits the amount of deflection of the gear when it's under load. This adjuster is coated in red Loctite, then screwed in until it touches the ring gear, then we back it off a quarter turn. After we set it up, there's no adjustment necessary unless you disassemble your rear or change ring and pinion ratios. 
Once the rear assembly is complete, a pair of axle seals with O-rings are lubricated and hammered into place with a rubber mallet and our installation tool. Then we install a pair of spiral snap rings at each seal. The last step is to install the gear cover. Steel stud balls are inserted into each boss to prevent the steel studs from driving into the center section. Then the studs are installed with red Loctite before the gear cover is fitted with its O-ring and installed. The cover should slide on smoothly without using any force. If you do need to force it on, it's possible you have a bent stud that should be replaced. Once the gear cover is installed, we recommend torquing the nuts to 20 foot-pounds. Then it's into a box and out to your shop. If you have any questions about specs or assembly instructions that weren't answered here, give us a call and our techs will be happy to help you out. You can also see a complete list of available rears and options in our Sprint and Midget catalog, which we can mail to you or you can view online at winnersperformance.com.